Welcome to Diacast. Insert joke here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, you're doing so well. I know, it's That's fine because we can cut out the giggles. All right. Here well, at, I, yes, here at Diacast, our group of six unfulfilled New Year's resolutions usually play different RPGs, bringing you a new game and system every few weeks. But this week, for our Just After New Year's episode, we are in fact going to be reviewing the games we've played so far in our three months of... Yes, three months of Diacast. We're great at timekeeping. We're very oh, great yeah. at timekeeping. Numbers are hard. As established previously, we and Di- we at Diacast are amazing at maths. Can we all know so much so are? we removed it from one game. <laughs> yeah. And we struggled. We really <laughs> did. My name is Lukey, and today's question is, what was your favourite part of 2020? You guys want to know what mine was? Launching a podcast with you guys. Oh, damn it, that was my one. I know, oh, suck was... it, yeah, bitches, very you little make happened me go in 2020 first. <laughs> to be proud of. Hi, I'm Matt, and um, my favourite thing about 2020 was uh, learning the violin. Oh, that's Did cool. You? Wow. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I'm not particularly good yet. But You've been I'm doing still. it. Oh, <laughs> that's fair enough. That's cool. yeah. Did you buy a violin? I did buy a violin. How many instruments do you have? You now? have so many talents. Many. Uh, he might be gone sometime counting. I, I'm not. I'm not a joke. It's, it's it's in the low twenties. Jeez. Hi there. My name is Jacob, and my favourite thing about 2020 was um, running my uh, running my pro. Dungeon Master campaign uh, based on the Baldur's Gate uh, Descent into Avernus storyline because that's just, I just sodding love this group and uh, the group that I run for and I think you guys have mostly heard me wax lyrical about them before and this is a shout out to the um, Descent into Elter- uh, sorry, uh, Sunset over Elterel, Elterel has fallen lot. Love you Sometimes guys. you just say Ooh. words. <laughs> yeah, and if you want to hire mm-hmm. Jacob as a dungeon master, that is a thing you can do. You can. Hi, I'm Helen, or am I? My favourite part of 2020 was probably uh, meeting my girlfriend. She makes me Aww. happy. Aww. Aww. Wait, 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 Helen, are oh, you? No. Am I? What? Well, you said, or are what? you? Are you? Oh, I didn't follow that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so that good. was really weird. Helen, or Lukey. am I? So I want to know if you are. Yes, I think maybe. I don't know. What is personhood? That's a good question. That's a very good question. That's really the question we all yeah. be asking. Don't tempt the philosopher. <laughs> Lukey introducing a sliver of identity crisis into tonight's question. Hello there, my name is Peter, and my favourite thing about 2020 was that I graduated. And Yay. I got to graduate, uh, yes, I I completed my degree, graduated in absentia, uh, so much in absentia, I haven't actually been back to the town where I did university in. So, congratulations nonetheless. You did, yeah. you did the thing. I, I have completed, I have completed the thing. You graduated in absentia, and so and are you looking for a career in absentia? Uh, yes, uh, soon I'll you have be a get- doctorate in absentia. Sorry, there's so many jokes to be made. Yeah, well, oh, I mean, <laughs> it's easy to get a job in absentia. You just don't turn up. Yeah, <laughs> or you work from home. Hi, I'm H, and my favourite thing about 2020 was that I wrote and directed a short film in my house right before lockdown in the UK, and that was Ooh. really fun. And it's coming out, Yay. or has it come out? I don't know when 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 this is, but it might be out. It may or may not Yay. be out. It's Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's film. Look it should be out. It's a Christmas film. It. If not, 21. Ah. <laughs> but soon. Um, I, I've just done the maths and uh, my body weight in bags of quavers is about 276 bags of quavers. That doesn't seem quavers like enough. Quavers are so fucking no. light. Like, there's nothing there. It's not that many. And I don't know yeah. you're quite like skinny and you must be quite Put light. on but weight. Still. Yeah. I've been trying. I know that feeling. Do you like I too some you, know, you, need, you need some bags of quavers. That's no, what you, you don't. Need. Quavers are low calorie. You need to get you some monster munch. Wait, they are? Oh, I mean, I mean, to be honest, mate, go the whole hog and have a potato. <laughs> <laughs> Just a whole potato. <laughs> So 
So, this week, we thought we've had about three months of games and we wanted to talk about and chat about the games that we've been playing and what we think and what we enjoyed about them. And we hope that you enjoy listening to us talk about them. So, we're going to go through them in the order we played them, which means we're starting with Honey Heist. GM'd by the indomitable Helen. Hello. Oh, uh, it was my first game ever GMing, and one of my first games ever playing. Um, and as a complete newbie, it was a really nice game to start with. Um, the sort of character creation and the rolling, and even just the setting. You can roll some dice, and you'll get a setting, you'll get some tasks, and then you just build around it. It's quite a loose game, which meant that for me, as a new GM with a lot of experienced players, I was able to sort of set up a map and just let you loose um, and then be more reactive to what you were doing. So I think if you're a brand new GM, it's a really good one to get you started um, because it is sort of, yeah, loose and easy going. And then also I think it was just a fun one for a lot of sort of carnage and possibilities and fun times that wasn't just like we're going to murder everyone because we do do a lot of those. And I like the fact (laughs) that this was a carnage without necessarily brutally murdering people. Yeah, it was very cartoony. Lots of shenanigans. Oh, it was hu- yeah, it was heavy shenanigans. shenanigans. Yeah, mostly <laughs> shenanigans. Yeah, I mean, going around, going going round the virtual table. Matt, what did you think of it? Oh uh, yeah, I lo- I think Honey Heist was my favourite. I really liked Honey Heist. Is I liked it because it was like short and sharp. Like you could play it in like I'm an sorry, afternoon. Who, who yeah, were you? Oh, I was I was uh, Gordon, Gordon! The Sun Bear, <laughs> who uh, who I really enjoyed playing. Yeah, I mean, it felt, like you kind of said, because it was fairly rules light, there was a lot of room for improv, which was great mm. fun. Uh, it wasn't particularly long. It's really easy to understand the rules. Yeah. Like, despite the fact that, yes, I did actually, I did lose because <laughs> I wasn't paying attention <laughs> to the rules. Despite that, it was, in fact, quite an easy game to play. And you didn't um, lose. Yeah, I really recommend you just, it. Uh... Well, I mean, I feel, I feel like as a group, we won. Yeah. I, I have no regrets about turning traitor. It was great fun. <laughs> and um, hey, I can't wait for Gordon to come back as a zombie bear. I mean, he'll be back. I don't the know necro where. Bear. I don't know where. In, uh, yeah, Gordon in the necro bear. Honey Heist <laughs> 2, Electric Bear Galoo. How, yeah. how much of the um, game do you think you enjoyed purely because you could be completely mad as Gordon? Like it was, it was a very strong character. I'm not gonna lie; it definitely pushed my enjoyment. Oh, actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, That's but, fair. but also, it wasn't just Gordon. Like all of the characters were freaking. Yeah, great. I mean, everyone turned up with their. They were all really, really good characters. I do yeah, think we were definitely on form that week. Like everybody brought something kind of really cool to the table. Yeah, we all yeah, had such like, like unique ideas. Yeah. Um, I I was about to say, I'd like to take over at this stage and say, yeah, I, overall, yeah, absolutely, I really enjoyed the game, um, and I feel like, as a group, this was kind of, also almost from a production standpoint, we couldn't have opened with a better game, frankly. This was the game I felt most comfortable playing. I felt like this was my and our centre of gravity, almost. Yeah, because it's it it, oper- it operates in that sort of sweet spot between silly of silliness and whimsy, and and uh, but then there's also like oh there are rules and a thing to do, but it it's almost like there's no stakes and because the stakes are so low, you bring them up so much. Yeah, that's so yeah, true. Like, actually, yeah, it's like going on a rampage in like an open an old open world game like Grand Theft Auto or something, except that you it's presented <laughs> yeah. whimsically as well. Ah. Simpsons hit and run. Simpsons hit and run. That's my yes. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. no one's actually gonna get Simpsons hurt. Simpsons is even it's less wholesome. Much than exactly. Exactly. I would say this is just yeah. more wholesome. Yeah. yeah, it's just delightful. And oh, also... oh 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 oh. And for for the record, yeah. I played Pansy, the honey badger. Pansy. Pansy. And I won. Yeah, you, you really well, did. Well, I don't did. know. I think I think <laughs> that at the next family meeting, you'll definitely find that you. Um, oh, almost certainly. <laughs> but I can't hear you over the sound of my honey. <laughs> anyway, I think. Bumbelina and Boo Boo won because we won escape from Gordon and possibly love. This is true. <laughs> this is true. You have to I listen like to, to imagine... Electric Bear Galoo 2 or whatever it called yeah. get to find out. Honey yeah. Heist 2, Electric Bear Galoo. I like to imagine that uh, Bumbelina and Boo Boo get married and they adopt uh, a pair of bear cubs and they call them Boo Bumbelina and Bumbaloo. 
<laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Before we go into just straight <laughs> writing fanfic and or RPing a sequel, Helen. <laughs> uh, we've already had you, Helen. Rubelina is terrible, can I just say? Oh, um, <laughs> me. I've sort of said that it's it sort of. I, I, I quite like a whimsical rampage. <laughs> um, th- there's no part of it that was like. Oh, uh, uh, do I have? Uh, did I say the wrong things? Did I do the wrong things? It's no. I was a bear, and I was a very timid bear. I was, I was Michael the bassist, and I, <laughs> as you can hear from the recording, I didn't have a name in mind. I didn't really have much of a character in mind. I, I also got the one, the the one very small criticism I would have is that some of the the descriptors in my mind were a bit vague so I got incompetent yeah. but admittedly I think that I think that's me not being clever enough and having an underdeveloped lizard brain because <laughs> when I get incompetent then surely it just means he's big and he's clumsy and I think I kind of play oh, yeah, that. absolutely <laughs> yeah I suppose it is yeah. it's quite flexible yeah. with a term like that with mm. how you take it and yeah. what your opinion of it is yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I like advantage to just and a disadvantage I like mm. to just kind of take them down to their logical conclusion like Bumbelina was the rookie, so I just had it that she had absolutely no confidence, no idea what she was doing. She latched on to Gordon as like the one person who knows what's going on, and any suggestion someone makes, she's just going to do it because she thinks that they've got the better <laughs> idea than her. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> which worked really well because she was stuck between fucking, yeah. uh, fucking Bumbelina and Gordon, both of whom were deranged. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 yeah, who were both suggesting the dumbest things possible. <laughs> yeah. I think you should eat the tent. Okay, I'm going to eat the tent. What a great idea. <laughs> that should work. Also, it had so many memorable moments as well. Like, for me personally, just the handing over the cash machine. Yeah, oh my God, <laughs> yeah. that was so funny. That is, like, up there. I, I have done many improv performances, and I am genuinely proudest of handing over a cash machine. <laughs> that was just so fucking good. Just so... And, cash and, machine's uh, over there. All right. Here you go. Okay. <laughs> that was That was good, actually, yeah. Yeah, no, I really liked it too. It's actually the game that I think I've tried to play with other people since. It's like, it's the one I've taken away from this podcast and gone like, hey, you want an easy, fun introduction to RPGs? Why don't you try this one? And you'd get to be bears. Like, straight up, I'm, I'm going to get my parents to play When you say your mum is going to this. teach people she works mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, like my mum was going to try and play it. Yeah, she was going to try and play it with some of her work colleagues and it turned out they didn't quite have enough time. But like, she was legitimately going like, yeah, this is really fun. Oh, it's bears. Oh, you do this. Oh, look, you have to get honey. Oh, that's hilarious. Look, it's a black orchid, honey. Ha ha ha. And like, she could understand <laughs> it having never played an RPG before. Um, so yeah, from that yeah, point of like, view, like, it's really like, good. Yeah. Yeah, and um, again, off that marketing riff, this is um, the, uh, like Honey Heist is the example that I've been using on my um, on my colleagues at work who are yeah, they're about as straight and narrow normal salt of the earth as you get. Um, so this is a real, this was a really nice, grounded, whimsical thing to go, and you get a bunch of people who. Yeah, you, you, you get a bunch of very, very non-nerdy, not part of this culture people, and you go, it's about this. And they go, that's cute. That sounds fun. I might listen to that. So, yeah. Yeah, Aww. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. All hmm. right. Final thoughts. So, yeah. Big thumbs up. Honey Heist. I think we all... Would we play again? Oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yep. As the GM, was there anything that you found difficult with it? Anything you would have improved? Um... From an entirely beginner standpoint, and I can see why they haven't done it, because it would be a, a lot of work, but if there'd been some sort of suggested map, I would have appreciated it, because I really had no idea what, what I was doing and had to put a lot of thought in, and obviously it's because I'd never actually done anything like that before. But as we are saying, yeah. it's, sort of, it's quite a good game for beginners, um, but at the same time, I was just sort of like, they can be at a lake, maybe? And you guys, mm-hmm. uh, your characters do quite a lot of quite impressive teleportation, Mm. Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, because I, I just uh, couldn't work point, out where I think you Michael were. Michael throws Bumbelina about like, half a mile. mile. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's true. Because actually, you know. some of the settings are already pre-rolled, aren't they? You just roll between like yeah. six of them, so they could have yeah. some very simple so sample, like, like camp map, con yeah. map, blah blah blah. Yeah, that, that but makes also sense. just yeah. a, just a sort of reminder of you know, like it, it's one of those things that it seems like it will be. I mean, it's one of the games particularly where I think you could just pick it up and play it. Like, you can just grab the rule yeah. books and get a group and of people and just it. be like, we're doing this now and go for it. Um, but if you are a beginner, you do need to do, like, that little bit of, like, where am I? 
Um, yeah. What is happening? <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's a feature. It's this. a feature because Grant Howitt, for a bit of context, does make these one-page RPGs. I think they're like roughly one a month or something like that. Uh, oh, there wow. are, there are okay. dozens of the things right now. But I think it's just part <laughs> of the presentation that this is absolutely a completely skeletal, bare bones. Game. Hey. So okay. if you are coming in from a complete new perspective, there is a bit more work to be done. Yeah. Well, on on that note, I loved that you um when when Gordon went human, uh, went criminal. You actually <laughs> had criminal. You, <laughs> you actually had <laughs> like a thing for him to do instead of just oh now yeah, you've turned against everyone so. Yeah. Yeah, like I, or like while I was playing it, I assumed that was like written in like on the page somewhere. Like I didn't really, I'd not done much reading, so I just kind of assumed that was built in. The whole like Tom human hands and the trap and everything. I didn't realize till afterwards that you was coming up with that like yourself because that felt really, really smooth and really nicely oh, done. Good. I think yeah, it's nice, like, like to bring yeah. out a Springer sidebar here. That just Helen, you knocked it out the fucking park. You really yeah, did. It was yeah, so fucking well good. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Did you come up with the name Tom Human Hands, or is that in there somewhere? I can't remember. I came up with the name Tom Human Hands. That's such Hands. a it's good a name. name. <laughs> Tom Human Tom Hands. Is perfect <laughs> with like, the vibe of the game. Like It just fitted so well. I assumed you yeah. found it on the sheet somewhere. That's kind of what I mean. Yeah. I, I did had no idea that that wasn't like already written down as a consequence right it just felt completely in keeping with the cuz also cuz no, i'd think... like cuz i cuz i read the rules i knew that it said if you went full criminal you betrayed everyone but then like i i think it was because gordon went full criminal while getting honey so when you were like oh i've taken a penalty um or something, I was like, oh, okay, he must not have gone full criminal. So it actually came as a <laughs> fucking shock to me when he betrayed us, <laughs> even though I knew that it should be happening. <laughs> I'm so glad that happened. Me too. Yeah, yeah no, I, I think, think just... I, because I had rolled a thing that said that, like, little do you know, there's, like, an evil mastermind or something. So I had in the back of my uh... head, like, how do I try and incorporate this? And when that came up, I was like, my chance has come. This is how I can try and incorporate nice. this. Yes. So I took the tent that you hadn't been in and was just like, clearly, this is a trap. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, and then, there yeah, must Matt, be lasers. You, you just played it so well. You just <laughs> took it and ran with it and just did better like oh, never you really hoped. did. It was like the planets aligning. Like as soon as you so like perfect. said, actually, you're going to betray the group. I was like, this is, it's, <laughs> no like, it's like we'd written it. You know, it was just so perfect for the way Gordon had been up to that yeah. point. Like, of course he's you the traitor. You were so it happy was, to betray fantastic. us. <laughs> I, it was the perfect ending. It was. To, Sorry like, for murdering you, by the way. It's just one of those games where everything comes together. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Sometimes you just have one of those games where the dice feel like they're kind of telling the same mm-hmm. story you want mm-hmm. them to tell. Yeah. And that was one of those games. Is so thing would, in would we play it again? Pansy getting away with it at the end as well. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely would play, play again. again. Should play yeah. again. Yeah, I would play yeah. again. I don't know if it's got like You'll innumerable replays in it because it only has so many options. Yeah, but that's that's my that's I my. I am slightly it. reserved okay. about playing again purely from I feel like we I feel like we explored the best potential of that system. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, Antological theory. Antological theory. Sort of, sort of run by Lukey. Right. So we didn't necessarily have a GM, but Lukey, you brought this one to the table. So do you want to do the the intro? I did. The kickoff. So I, I had been looking forward to playing this. So I heard it uh, play tested on one shot years ago. Um, was it years ago? It was a while back. Um, and I really enjoyed it, and I just thought it was the kind of thing that we would really excel at because it's role play heavy, and I was correct. Um, <laughs> because we're <laughs> insane. Um, and I thought we brought some really fun concepts to it. It's it's so easy to play. You just um because it's role play heavy, you have to have people who are willing to like muck in and like just go for it. So it's not like for people who are gonna refuse to talk. But, um, again, it's a really good one for beginners, as long as they're, like, willing to be enthusiastic. Um, so I enjoyed it. 
Um, yeah, it's effectively guided roleplay, isn't it? It's not yeah. even. Re- it's got no competitional element. No. It's pretty much just guided improvisation, which I really enjoy. Yeah, yeah. I think once we kind of got it, it we started off a little slow. Yeah. But I think once we kind of got the hang of our characters, I could have gone on for hours. I, th- you know what I, I mean? think we didn't warm up that week, so we were a little bit like rusty at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah, but I, I also I think it was just feeling out. Sorry, oh, was know, say, because it's such a different game from like everything else we do. I mean, we straight up like you know, there's no real rolling mechanics and like we said it is that you know entirely no it's not even collaborative it's it's yeah purely discussion based role play and that isn't something that well i mean i i was gonna say it isn't something i've done before i haven't done anything before but it isn't something that sort of (laughs) we've done before as a group and also i got the impression it isn't how most role play games go so it was something Mm. that no one Mm. had really done before so i think it took us a while to actually get in our stride for it and actually sort of work out what we were doing and then once yeah. we got into it, it was really, really fun. It was. This is this is not no, a game that I would run just... for strangers. I would have to, or un- no. unless speci- no. unless I was specifically in the context of here's a weird, slightly off kilter game that you might try. Because between yet yeah, the relative lack of mechanics, such that you can raise the is this even technically a game flag. And... <laughs> yeah, I'm actually saying I'm not sure I'd call it running a game. Yeah, it's like a weird just... structured discussion. <laughs> yeah, and, and also just the weirdness, the the weird quirkiness of the concept itself, the Ant Philosophy Society. Um, yeah, this is... <laughs> Ant's discussing philosophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We decided we were a society. This is true. <laughs> this is true, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 that, yeah. That's sort of a big part of it, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I actually found it quite difficult. I didn't warm to it that much. And I think you could probably tell Neither listening back to I. it, you don't hear me that much. And I thought That's I true. would, because I'm all up for a weird philosophical discussion, but I feel like I didn't quite pick my, like, ant sona very well, because everyone had a very cool concept. And by the same, time it got same. to me, I was like, hmm. Well, I don't want to be like the socialist because that's Digby, and I don't want to be like the royalist because that's Jacob's character. Original. Um, oh, I was the royalist. Thank yeah, you, you were royalist too. There was a couple of like semi-royalists, weren't the, there? Though? The but, yeah. uh, Marshall communist was Jacob. Strength yes, with that particular, was particular particular terms and all. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, was, I don't have I was a formal his... education of philosophy but i was like i know some i mean i did an english degree that's close enough sometimes but i just found it a bit difficult to like say anything particularly insightful or interesting i was just kind of like i'll just listen to you guys which obviously isn't the oh. best listening for everyone else but yeah i, I struggled with antological theory for whatever reason yeah, yeah. I was, uh, my my hmm. theory with it was just say insane things i like, guess i didn't have a good like i didn't have an interesting or... standpoint there because i don't want to like be myself because that's kind of boring I yeah. was, I was An- Anthony. Oh, very I think? interesting. You yeah, were, but it wasn't a role play, you? though, was it? Yeah, I just didn't click. It didn't click for me. Okay. Yeah, exactly. See, I... see, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Antonio. There we go. Antonio. I would. I. My general opinion, and I've realized. I think it's a thing with me. It, it, it might be a personal thing. I don't like games, especially RPGs, that. Are based in are based in monologuing, yeah. <laughs> because I, yeah, yeah, because it'll it'll come up like, like this one. I'm I'm not very good arguing. Like I've said before, I have an underdeveloped lizard brain, <laughs> so I You're so, so mean the, to yourself. Be nice um, to yourself. Oh. No, I look you have a look. Degree. I'm thick as mint. You said I'm, it I'm, is. I'm, the you Dyer have a degree. Car, the Dyer Cars 2021 New Year's resolution is be nicer to ourselves. Oh, well, hard. okay. I still, I'm still thick as mint. Um, the I, I'm not like I'm knowledgeable. I know random shit, and I have, and that's why I was going all on about Manila envelopes and just sort of having fun as sort of a capitalist ant. But like people would speak for ages, and I'd be like, oh, how can I argue against this? And then they'd say one thing, and I go, oh, that's a thing. Try and like, like get get like interact with it, and then they just sort of keep speaking. Like, oh, I've lost it now. And it so mm-hmm. it sort of becomes. It it becomes less of a game, and I could I could realize why it'd be fun. I know the kind of people that would absolutely love this game because it's a silly conceit. But if you're someone like me who tells themselves they're arty farty, but one of their favorite films is the a- the A Team remake, <laughs> they because they fly a tank, 
they <laughs> you, you sort of don't have much to do. It's mm. I, I mean I, I, I know I, what you're getting at. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I feel, like your you um your particularly like your humor and your in your humor mm. Peter and your intelligence is very much based on like quips and reposts and one liners and that's definitely not so much suited to construction uh, constructing weird old history so stupid it actually comes around to making sense like you find on posts on Tumblr um which is kind of what mine or or or, or Lukey's humor it can be uh a bit more um catered towards so yeah saying this i did also have a game like... for people who live on tumblr yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it is although i did do have to say i do enjoy the ending of that episode yeah. because it's just me screaming oh yeah no i <laughs> <I've> missed, <laughs> I, missed I, I i i it's just delightful listening to you die in the background it's magnificent it is definitely a game that we warmed into yeah. <laughs> why, why are you screaming i can't even remember Ah, oh, it's the bit where Matt goes up, lot leaves, yeah, and we just lose Peter for about ninety seconds. He's just going, <laughs> "Oh, that, that was my favourite moment of the year." <laughs> I've got wings. <laughs> Speaking of which, Matt, Lord we haven't leaves. heard much from you on this one. <laughs> I, I, I really liked it. Um, I, I totally hear like what H and Peter are saying. I think. Like I forget who said it about this game being like it's, it blurs the line about is it actually a game? It felt to me more like almost like a drama game. Yeah, like, you know when you yes. like, you're like a yeah. Thespian, yeah, darling, definitely. and you're like we're gonna kind of like improv some characters and we got to stay in role, yeah. which is quite a different thing from what we've done. But like personally, I really enjoyed it. I think I benefited from the fact I had a pretty clear idea of character from the start. So I think like me and Lukey in particular felt like both of us kind of knew our characters from the very beginning yeah. were stereotypes yeah. and we was just kind of expanding whereas everyone else like had to develop and i think by the end most of us kind of were i think my favorite bit of that episode kind of what uh you guys were saying was like the last 20 minutes when it was like just carnage we w- i think we kind of i don't know if this is what the creator is intended for the game I, i'm sure what? there's no correct way to play it but it was like once we kind of worked out that the philosophical questions for us it wasn't really about answering the questions. They were just springboards for chat. Yeah, no, and no. then we started to world build. Yeah. And once we started to world build and start to come up with these random little the things that became salon. canon, that's oh, when... Yeah. Oh, yeah, like salon, when it was like, okay, so we leaves. now have the ant modern and like we have parades for the fucking so, queen yeah. and the aphids not are like a little modern, slave race. the tant modern. T- <laughs> the tant modern, that's right. <laughs> like that was when I think it really started to pop. And I'm sure like you can play this and be like genuinely having philosophical discussions. I don't think you can. Which we did. Again, the but questions I think it... are like, is food real? And... <laughs> But but when that's a springboard for chatting about like oh I fucking hate the Queen's parades like that's when it started to be yeah. funny I yeah. think yeah. when we really started to use them as just basically just conversation starters for these bizarre characters we were inhabiting. I think um, I Adira Slattery it. definitely did intend it to be like that kind of thing. She yeah is it puts you a in very... a mindset, but then you have to kind of yeah. chat. I think a lot of her games are very conceptual, um, and yeah. this is she doesn't do a lot of comedy games like that. I don't think, but um, mm. I do like I do like anthological mm. theory. Yeah, yeah. In summary, I agree with Lukey, but I think maybe, maybe it kind of tells that me and Lukey really liked it. But the two of us definitely came out the gates like yeah. we yeah. speak a we lot. We had start, like opposite we? characters as well. You went. I think that's kind of helped because yeah. I felt I spent a lot of the game just riffing off of you. Yeah, we Lukey. had like, like we were just arguing yeah. the whole game. <laughs> yeah, like which I think helped. Um, yeah, with, yeah. With, I, um, I really enjoyed it, but I totally hear the criticism. If you have a strong well. character, you'll enjoy it a lot more. I'd say that's yeah. like I think, that. Yeah. I think that'll be that. That's my main takeaway. Yeah. And I think I needed a stronger. Yeah. Definitely. Personally, I needed a stronger capitalist ant, and I hear uh, s- s- similar noises. Yeah, from across the virtual absolutely. table. That will be my point for games later down the list that I struggled with. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Is that everyone? Any any mm. final notes on Antilogical Theory? Uh, I would quite. Yeah. I would quite like to. I think my my summary is that the game, what the game is presented as, and what the game is actually about, are two quite separate things. And once you realise mm. that. You're off to the races. So what do you feel it's presented as and what do you feel it's about? It's presented as have a philosophical discussion as ants, which is completely fucking bizarre. But what the game is actually about, (laughs) as we've said before, 
as we've as as we've just said a couple minutes ago, using those questions as a riff for strong characters to bounce off each other and and yeah. and go absolutely just just mm. go absolutely for the outfield as far as continuity goes. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's my only thing with it, and it's definitely not as beginner friendly as as Honey Heist. But oh god, no, no. For for yeah. what it for what it is. Really. I thought it would be quite like when we first you know had discussed and I through, I was like okay like it seems seems like quite a simple concept because it's you roll this and then you talk about it but in reality I found it more difficult for a, like from a beginner perspective I didn't have the same issues because I think I also sort of decided my stereotype and just played that for the whole time yeah um, yeah once you kind of settled into Sims yeah Sims exactly like, vocal, like Sims just, just kind of like backing up Reginald and it. myself yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, I think, I think um, for a if... beginner game, it's a bit more... It, you have to get into it. And you have to know how to get yeah. into it. Yes, you have to be very, very willing to roleplay and commit to something. And I think the the yeah. of us who struggled didn't find the something. Yeah. Mm. I think it's it's one of those games where if you are a confident roleplayer and you're and you just throw yourselves into things like that, then you'll enjoy it. Yeah, it's way, if you expect to come out of this game with your dignity intact, you're not going to enjoy yourself. Dignity? You What's dignity? <laughs> exactly. You that's know, why we. Nobody even be. started this podcast with <laughs> dignity. <laughs> dig no, we wouldn't be here if we had dignity, time. Helen. Come on. No. Dig bitty. Dignity. <laughs> You awaken. You awaken. Ooh. You awaken in a strange place. Oh my god. Holy shit. Matt, give us your oh, yeah. GM opinion first. Okay, so uh, first thing I'll say is uh, while reviewing You Awaken, you've got to bear in mind that like the the, the actual idea <laughs> of the game was not necessarily to do like a sci-fi horror. You, we could have done this and made it completely differently. We, so we did fuck around with it a lot. In terms of like reviewing the game, like i had great fun playing the game but like as a dm i really really liked the simplicity of the system because like, i mean i've played this game a couple of times now with other people and like every single time it's been completely different like obviously we had the freaking freaking horror space doctor who episode that i did with you guys but i've done like a noir mystery with this game i've done like a little freaking happy freaking tree friends story thing like it really can go in any direction it's oh dear Lord. it's a very good one for people who are like competent role players like they're kind of familiar with like rps but they're looking for something very very easy that's just going to be quite funny um and as a dm it's very very forgiving but it's yeah i think it's it's a great fun little oddball it's a good one to have the in your one... back pocket as well because it can sort of be for any occasion yeah, it, it's the it's the RP equivalent of sitting on the sofa with Netflix up and being like, hmm, what should we watch? I don't really know. Let's scroll for a bit. Yeah. It's it's the RP equivalent of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong. Right. Yeah. The one negative thing I'll say about it, which we amended before you awaken, is I do think having two D6s mm. takes away a lot of the fun versus yeah. a one D12. So, what, wait, wait, wait. Expand on that. What do you mean by having two D6s? So in the rules, as they're presented on like the rule sheet, uh, it suggests the only dice rolls you're going to need are rolling two D6s. And adding them together. Um, and so you got you can have any score from two to 12 right mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah which is fine but because there's two d6s the the way that kind of probability and odds works means that you tend to get a lot of eights and nines and six so you get a lot of middle rolls and not that many extreme ones whereas if you roll a like a, d12. a single d12 you're more likely to get extreme rolls 12s and extreme bads ones which is just funnier yeah, <laughs> yeah. or more extreme yeah, or more thrilling yeah, that's my only real note the whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. i agree with that yeah like just it's a probability game that's my only real negative that's less of a problem with the game itself and more just the nature of probability which you can apply to any of the totally. many games we probably yeah. are going to play that run off 2d6 yeah. Because quite a lot of them yeah. do. Totally, yeah. I would just be aware of two d sixes. As we know <laughs> in Diacast, we do have a vendetta against the very concept of maths. Uh, yeah, as this game typified, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> a d twelve removes rude maths, and it insulted me once. <laughs> uh... um, but yeah, that's that's me. Like without trying to get into the specifics of the dollhouse. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, as DM, I thought it was really. If fun. I may, if I may interject, I think you said like, oh, it may be not representative, but I think the whole point of this game is like there is no one recreation of yeah. this that is representative because the players yeah, make the game totally. and we pick all the themes. So the fact it was a sci-fi horror in yeah. space was just 
our version of it and we did come in with an agenda actually, like yeah. hey i think this will be our halloween episode let's choose horror as a genre but totally. yeah actually yeah. on that note is one other thing i'll say as dm what i also really really liked about it as like i've dm'd a bit but i'm not a super experienced dm it was really nice to have that first hour where we were all kind of doing ideas together mm, yeah. yes that collaborative yeah yeah so I wasn't just having to come with everything. Yeah, like you guys, like obviously there was a mystery to be solved, but like a lot of the really cool ideas about it being on a moon and like around orbit and shit, that was coming from you guys. And the idea it was going to be a creepy dollhouse <laughs> I... was definitely not <laughs> where I would have gone if I'd been left to my I own device. I was devices. so yes. happy that I got setting because I'd been thinking about it. Yeah. Like if I got setting, what I would pick and I was like, oh, dollhouse is a good one. So I was so excited that I got <laughs> to do that. But I also think that's great in that because then I imagine as players, like when you get to it, like obviously I'm running the game for you, but you've kind of got a stake in the game. You're not just yes. passive. Actually, yeah. absolutely, like, you yeah. kind of helped create this universe, so we're all kind of in it together. Yeah, we're all in this uh, yeah. Um, together. I think oh, I'll pick up pick up the ball here, and the thing that for me, what what struck me was that uh, for you awaken in a strange place was that the um, there's kind of two halves to the rules, and the one mm. half was the guided creation of the game and the world that we all went through in a slightly modified form because yeah. there are more of us than the game strictly mm. requires but True. um we and then the it's you start playing <laughs> and the thing is that part of the rules where you where you actually get to break down to brass tacks and actually start playing we almost completely tossed that out the window <laughs> yeah but i do we feel did. that's in the spirit of the game like there, there are rules. There, are, like we, 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 re, we rejigged the core. What do you roll mechanic? Um, just due to the nature of the, the like amnesiac story. Of course, the skills that we assigned, we didn't find all of those out. And there were meant to be rules for like combat and having health and stuff like this, which would just never yeah, right. came up. Um, yeah, we just didn't yeah. need it. But I will. It literally says on on the kind of the sheet at the start. It says all these rules are suggestive. Changes you see as fit. So I think it's very much in keeping with how the game's intended. I think if you're like this combat doesn't work, then that's fine. It is like H said with the fact that it ends up being actually very representative of how the game is meant to be. Was it H who said that? Yeah, yeah I think fair, so, yeah. how yeah, the game yeah, is meant yeah. to be played because the the rules straight up say get rid of any rules you don't like and make up your own. So yeah. by making exactly, up our own rules, exactly. we followed the rules. I mean, it's like every basically. RPG tends to say that to some degree or other, but this yeah. front and centered it really, really hard. So I'd say that yeah, no, the um, the, the my, I actually forgot to make my ending point earlier, which is that the um, the second half of those rules for you awaken, they are very much like insert mechanics here as far as yeah. as, as the game rules is concerned, yeah. and we just kind of instinctively, without having to, I think that says our nature as. Like, quite experienced role players is that we just <laughs> picked up and ran with By it. And large. <laughs> so experienced. I mean, you know, for the, the most, most part. I mean, no, no, Hel- Helen, you are at this stage. You're definitely like, you know. You're yeah. a professional podcaster. three months now. And, yeah, which gives you a hell <laughs> yeah, of a... Yeah, but three which... solid months. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, come on. Stop. Yeah. Not like six months by the time that this um by this episode. Look, my out. purpose yeah. in this podcast is to be the everybody who doesn't know how to do stuff. So I'm taking away my role. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as soon as you become yeah. competent, like, we will have to replace you. Part experienced role players. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I I can only. I can only apologise in that game because it was a sci-fi horror and I chose the stupidest voice. <laughs> oh <my laughs> God, Please don't apologise for Pink. I loved Pink. Like so Pink from was... the moment that, like, I literally, I was like, all right. So because I'd kind of, I'd written down, like, I'd randomly assigned colours and roles, right? So I knew red was going to be a certain thing, grey was mm. going to be a certain thing, and then you guys picked your colours, so I didn't know who was going to get what colour. Uh, but then it turned out that Peter, you selected Pink, the captain, <laughs> with certain stats. And I'm like, all right, okay, I can see him doing like a like a shivit style captain. I can see that. And then it's like, you see this boy in a uniform that's like eight <laughs> feet tall. And I'm like, I love just well, listening back to that. I just love the solid like 60 seconds, two minutes of us just going, what the fuck, Peter? <laughs> yeah. Like, right. I, can hear this I voice. love it. I love it. I, I really your captain I, is speaking. I, oh my god! I really I enjoy. <laughs> Hello there. I really enjoyed <laughs> green and, and I'm just saying, Matt, you absolutely knocked it out of that. Like, because every time it's like, okay, we do this and this and this again, and that 
I don't know why. It's like we're, we're repetitive. We're doing the same things again, and yet it's really fun. Yeah, yeah. And, it was and, fun. And that's yeah. that's normally a criticism of game design. It's like I, I, I've got into the sort of gameplay loop, and because it's a loop, I'm not enjoying it. This was amazing. <laughs> I mean, I've been playing a lot of... Um, what's that blinking game where the, the sun goes super... You're playing oh. a lot of that blinking game. You know, where you oh, blink. yes, not... Um... <laughs> The um, Outer Wilds. It's a great game, and I've Outer Wilds. What, like, oh, what yeah. a beautiful, yes. lovely game. Oh, Very different good. from this, but it does have that loop dynamic, and you have to kind of investigate to kind of like you keep trying until you succeed. And so I think I kind of co-opted that because I've been playing a lot of it, and it works really, really well. You guys, I get like you guys smashed it as well. Like yeah. it was great fun to see you guys taking the mystery seriously. Like yeah. nobody was like, I want to freaking smash the wall. Like or, or something. That um, was like, excuse was you. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely did do that twice. Did you? Did you? I like. I was oh, well, constantly well, right, trying you... to demolish the whole place. It just didn't all work. Right, I, I guess what you Feb. I apologise, <laughs> Alexis. Um, I guess. Yellow. I guess what I meant was like none of you. Uh, none of you were like. I'm, I was like sprinkling breadcrumbs for you to follow. Yeah. None of you were like. Hmm. Oh, there's a library there. I will go and get a weapon and attack the window again. Like, all of you were, like, quite happy to follow yeah. the audience. I kept like, getting distracted by the creepy you. chef lady who I ended up being in a conflict <laughs> with. Vendetta. I, I, w- also, yeah, I wish I'd Alexis let you fight the chef lady read. at the end. She wasn't going to go in the library. <laughs> I mean, I've got, I've got to say, like, apart, quite aside from, yeah, Matt's fantastic presentation of just this wonderful, like, sandbox that we got to fill fill the oh, corners so in mm. um just yeah watch lukey just watching you go absolutely fucking <laughs> feral <laughs> i just that made a fun. choice early on that my character because i'm not good at horror mm. um i tend to just try to bring humor into everything so i just made a choice early on that my character was just gonna be batshit crazy um and was just gonna just gonna lose her fucking mind constantly <laughs> Um, because that's kind of the closest I can get to horror. I also really Fair appreciated enough. how Hake's character like went from being like we can all try and work together, and I still to want to be friends. Die, and let's all go out to you yeah, know what? Yeah, no. so well, it's like Absolutely. she got her memory back, and as she got her memory back, she became a worse person. It was yeah. and it ended up working yeah. like you did you it know, so well. The thing Hake. about that, right? Yeah, I was totally unprepared for that. Really? Yeah, because like. <laughs> Because I'd, I'd known from the start that you were there was going to be the reveal that you were the villain, oh. or at least this was all kind of your doing. I kind of knew that from the moment you chose Red, uh, but I, I tried to not treat your character any differently from the others. Yeah, like, kind you of lifted didn't. You absolutely did To gradually work yeah. out. But then what I kind of expected, and maybe it's because like I kind of maybe it's because I know you. What I expected you to do <laughs> was to discover this and be like, no, I don't want to abandon my friends. I'll fight my former self and we'll leave together. I kind of left you the ability to open the <laughs> oh, door. Oh, you trusted in me. And to like go to the... <laughs> the I kind of... Ex- but like, I was kind of... You know, I left you the tools, but I fully expected you to be like, no, I'm going to fight my... And I was going to have like the vicar fight you and like all that. <laughs> And then you went full rogue, and I'm like, I was not like, I'm uh-huh. absolutely up for playing it, but I was not expecting that, which was great. Okay, I love like, that. <laughs> I must admit, in the couple of weeks after um, after playing, I and like actually, you know, listening back to the episode afterwards, I did have a moment of like, you know, fridge logic, where it makes sense, the movie makes sense at the time, but then you go to the fridge in the middle of the night, and you wait, hang on, why did that happen? Um, I had that yeah. listening back uh, afterwards, and I went, hang on, why did we bring her to the ship? Why did we let her get out with us? Yeah, yeah. why the fuck did we, Jacob? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to slit her throat. Why did you stop me? I don't know. <laughs> because we have humanity. No, I was, we don't. I was, I'm, I'm just strongly vibing Huge on my humanity. Hippocratic Oath, all right? It, I... was, it was about like the fact that humanness doesn't necessarily come from the human body and that you can be an android or a robot and it's more about like how you think and how you emote and how you treat other people than like what you are and how you should well, be nice to each other. And... Alexis was ha- yellow was having a damn identity crisis by the she, end because she, really she found out nice, she was a clone. First. Yeah, that just really That's got like true, thrown actually. out there. Like, yeah, yeah, when she found out she was a robot, <laughs> so like she has. No I had idea. to come up with like some kind of way to explain how like a teenager was a security chief. So I was like, yeah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Bre- bread in the tank, clone. You dodged a bullet there, like... Matt, because originally I was gonna make her be a creepy child, like a six-year-old. Mm. But then Peter confused me, and I couldn't work out if he was being a child or not. So I thought oh. I'd play safe and just be a teenager because I didn't want us to have oh, two creepy fair. children. Um, yeah, so you, you very much dodged a bullet. 
he was that. an en- he was an enormous child that probably yes. scared everybody yeah. at the local supermarket. He was a you man know? child. And again, I had to come up with like Mad some child. kind of reason how <laughs> you this eight foot tall child could be a starship captain. So I was like, um. Used, I am. used to living in zero no, I that worked. Yeah, oh, I like because like <laughs> when you said that later, I remember a point where I was like, "Oh, if we turn the gravity off, then I'll, I'll, I'll be better at this." I was and... a bit gutted you didn't do that because I wanted we to like, yeah, like give you buffs us if you was in zero. <laughs> yeah, the, re- the rest of you would have been utterly buggered, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. actually, I won't do this. I'm, I'm the captain here. I have some sort of responsibility." I love how at first you had you were like you were such a timid character, and then you found out you were the captain. You're like, "I am the captain. I'm going to tell you what to do." I am like, the captain. Oh. The power went straight look, there. You really did. Straight. Look, look, look. Matthew yeah. gave me a sticker, and I decided to use my. I decided to use my sticker to wield power over We've you. We gotta stop giving this man sticker. banana stickers. You are the uh, sole gainer of banana stickers so far. That's yeah. two for two. Yes, that's I, true. I did give you the banana sticker for Duck Duck Goose. <laughs> which, like, it's a great idea. There was no real room in it in the roleplay, but it was such a sick yeah. idea. If I was writing the screenplay. Would have absolutely used that. And then we'd have sat there and played a game of Duck Duck Goodness. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, actually, that would have really slowed things down. It would have done. But but that that is an idea I'm putting on record. (laughs) No, please, use it. I I just want to say, we all managed to, like, characterise ourselves really well before we even knew who we are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Jacob, I I can't remember, but did Grey say... Did you say Grey was wearing scrubs... Before you yeah, even knew you that Grey was, did, which Grey was, was the doctor. Creepy as fuck. Yeah, I d- yeah, no, absolutely, I did. And Jacob has the biggest brain of all. I, I really <laughs> don't. She has an overdeveloped lizard brain. It's just, uh, it's just one again. It's just uh, like we said with how um, with Honey Canister, how the stars aligned. I think very much with this game, and also because we are good friends and know each other, we just vibed and we the know stars each other. aligned. Who are you? Yeah, who are you guys? <laughs> I think. I did guess that Yellow was going to be the the combaty person because I don't know why, but I just thought Matt's going to make Yellow... Matt Matt thinks that yellow is a combat colour, was what my brain said. <laughs> color I mean, yeah, I suppose when you look at it, like, yeah, I didn't intend to, but I think you're not wrong that the colours do kind of work. Like, the grey suits logic, medic. Like, yellow kind of action bright. Green, pensioner. Also, grey's anatomy. <laughs> Everyone had already done something by the time it got to me. So, like, I knew that some people weren't good at combat and some people were good at technical stuff. And I was like, okay, we're mm-hmm. getting to combat, so it's probably going to be me. <laughs> it could have been yeah. me. You never know. Oh, buddy. I, get, I don't know how I would have... I'm sure I would have had to come up with something. But, yeah, like, it was, again, fortunate that you went for, like... A frick, as a side note, freaking loved Green. Oh, my freaking God, Green and his random, underpants. <laughs> like, freaking pub, fucking bar fly in the bathroom. Oh. The only <laughs> human. <laughs> that was the bit that I just couldn't contain myself laughing. The most that, human one among like, us. Yeah, the only human other than like the one who's running it all red. The only true human was an old man. <laughs> like, it wasn't like save the children. It was like, nah, mate. It's it's the old man in the bathroom. Is the only real human. Like, you just reminded me of so me. many of my customers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Fair. so sorry. <laughs> old people in their underwear. What? Well. <laughs> Customer service is tough, Peter. I wanted to be Good a point. different <laughs> character. I wanted to do something that I hadn't done before, and I thought, you know what? Yeah, you really did. Time, you did. Which was you did. funny as. You definitely did. Oh, my God. You, you, took, you took to it like an old duck to some new water. <laughs> <laughs> I think... <laughs> also, because... Even at a bath. Because there was, oh, like, yeah. so much going on, I was, like, getting confused a little bit, and I think that I liked kind of making Yellow more and more confused than I was. <laughs> so she just ended up being like really manic towards the end, uh, and which worked. Yeah, kind of had like the character had like a breakdown, which yep. was quite fun. She had like four in the space of she a did. minute. It was great. Um, I wish I'd given you the catharsis of taking out the chef. Like Pink yeah. got the muffin man. I wish I'd given you the chef. Yeah, that was a shame. Oh. But I did nearly kill Red. Nearly. I have like a hair cannon that like the the blow to Green's head wasn't as bad as it looked, and they like use their um, cybernetic technology to make him into like. A cyborg, like <gasps> a bit of both, and then they're like he woke up and he woke in a strange place and was like, "What happened?" And then the farm boy is like, "We have run the bath." <laughs> <laughs> you can now live with us for our mistress has fled, but you are our friend, Green. Yeah, and he lives with them for the rest of his ripe old age. <laughs> That's the happy what, like pretty much in the age he is <laughs> for the next six um, months. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, give or take. I mean, I love that head cannon. I'm gonna stick to it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I any any final thoughts? Oh, about I have a lot of questions weekend? actually. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I can try and answer a few quick ones if you got. Them. How were we being fed? Uh, they intravenously and yeah, I was about to say yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, uh, oh god I swear I had loads of questions I can't remember them now yeah, I, thought ah. I had a couple I mean, there's a couple of bits and bobs you didn't find so like the, the one big thing that I kind of expected you to try that you never mm -hmm. did so like I forget who had it but you a lot of you guys had stealth as a skill because oh. I the reason I gave you the muffin man was I I wondered if you'd be like well they knock us out like but there's an alternative way to knock ourselves out which is eating the food so that's something we can fake uh, i kind of thought oh, yeah. one of you might take a oh, bite God. of the muffin pretend to pass out oh yeah what was the and then fucking then i was gonna let you sneak out what was the deal with the fucking genius. muffin man we clearly weren't genius <laughs> well i mean you did you solved the mystery you didn't need it but like that's something i expected you to try and do would be to try and circumvent the night shift. Yeah. so in in the context of the experiment what was the role mm -hmm. of the muffin man like was he uh, there? In the context of the experiment, the muffin man was something you can hear that Matt, going, Matt uh, put in at the uh, very start of the horror game uh, 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 because I couldn't think of anything. Again, and I my head canon is that if we yet. all ate them, it would knock out only the cyborgs. But we just never got there. It would oh, have only shit. knocked out. Yeah, 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 we'd all eaten them. Ooh. Then it would have knocked never out everyone apart from red and green. Ooh. And that's why that's I had the colour ice. That's canon. But obviously, nice. we, we wouldn't <laughs> take the risk of trying them because we didn't know. Yeah, I like that. Mm. Yeah, that's canon. Also, the other thing that you never really like discovered was you know the there was like one of the dolls was always in Red's room. Yeah, yeah. That was basically in there. Um, in case you rumbled it early, basically Red. I was like, if Red works out ahead of like the final reveal that they think they are running everything yeah. that was like going to be a communication port where they, like they could talk to that thing after lights out and it would like wake you up and be like you probably have some questions i can talk to you now ah, yeah, so yeah that was yeah. like but a, i never a quite got gap, there ahead of time yeah. Yeah. Un 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 what? unfortunately we just kind of noped out of that in kaya yeah <laughs> we just saw that that's and went, fine yeah. like, i preferred what you did what like, was the deal with um the the man ankles um, was it literally just angles, like a, a punishment was, for resisting? It was conditioning. The idea would be that like if you uh, if you resist, then you get punished, and the idea would be to condition you guys to stop resisting, yeah, basically, yeah. And which just is kind of, of moderately to spend all of your time trying to solve the problem. <laughs> yeah, but Yellow's version of solving the problem was resisting. It did work to an extent because. I mean, Green was a bad example but because he was probably never going to resist anyway. He just wanted a bath. But like the fact that resisting caused consequences, he was like, you know, I'm just going to sit here and wait for someone to carry me back to bed. Oh, <laughs> and part totally. of it was because of his character. Yeah. But also, like, he wasn't going to bother trying to resist when he knew that, like, there was nothing. Because the only time he showed any resistance at all was when they were trying to escape. Mm. And yeah, that was totally. I mean, it was me trying softly to trying to say, like, you can't fight your way out of this. If you're thinking we're going to go shop on some bedposts. Like, I'll let you do it, but that's not what I'm looking yeah. for. Like... The, problem, the, the, problem, the problem is that Grey, Grey spotted that and then went in the exact opposite idea, went to the exact opposite tack with that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Continue to resist. I loved your roleplay about the hand as well, because obviously I didn't apply, I didn't yeah. have that in I my know, mind that was first, such a... as soon as you were like, yeah, as soon as you were like, the hand's missing, I'm like, right, I can use this. <laughs> like, that was such an out of left field thing, but it works so yeah. well. I, th I, think, I, I think I'd been reading something on Twitter at the time about lack of disabled representation in. Oh, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I had also been like reading that. stuff so, like that at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's cool. a good one. Anyway, yeah, uh, final thoughts? So, final good. Thoughts? Uh, I loved it. I thought it was I loved great. I really so really much. Liked it. Like you did a great job GMing, but like it was mm -hmm. also just I think a good multi, like directional game. You could just do so many yeah. crazy things with it. Because we we play quite yeah. late into the evening, and normally it gets a certain point, and I'm just like I am tired, and while I'm having fun, I want to go to bed, and I just with this one I just didn't want to end. Yeah. I was just like, tell me the next yeah, bit of the mystery. Like, keep going, yeah, I was like, going. what's going to happen? Don't stop now. I don't care that I have work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I just want to know. <laughs> Yeah. And I did definitely get creeped out by those dolls. Yeah, me too. I was genuinely a bit I mean, like, Ugh. I'm glad it was your idea. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you deserve the creep I didn't out. say it was an inhabited doll's house. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was yeah, a great the, the inhabited dolls were maybe my fault. 
I was yeah. like, are there mannequins everywhere? Yeah. And Matt was like, yes, there yeah, are. Yeah, you did say that. <laughs> what, <laughs> would it have been possible... Would it have been possible to make friends with the dolls? Like, if I, I had kept so trying hard. to kill them? <laughs> yeah, I did that. I, I kind of... I didn't want to push it because I kind of I had the conclusion like mm. in the office that you was going to discover. But like if, if one of you tried hard, I wasn't against it. I think it, I had kind of in the back of my head when like you met the... So I'd planned the vicar as being like upstairs kind of a bit separate from the others. Um, and I kind of in the back of my head, I was like, maybe he's a bit damaged. And if you guys were struggling for information, he might tell you some stuff and kind of help you if you needed it. But you didn't need him in no. the end. So I turned him into a villain. Um, so were they all awake all the time? The what? The, the dolls. androids. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was going to have them like patrolling at night. If you guys again, if you guys had tried to sneak out at night, <laughs> like, the muffin trick. I was going to have them like you'd be rolling stealth and they'd be patrolling with like freaking spotlights oh. coming out of their oh, eyes. Oh, fantastic oh, God, that's stuff like that. Sad we missed that. Yeah. Um, on, oh, oh, off, um, on, on which on which note, I'm in enti- I'm very much in favour of bringing back this setting for a future game with a different set of rules. Like, I think I floated yeah. the idea of doing um, a Stars Without Number game. Yeah. I think, can I just say one last thing about this game? Yeah, yeah. This is another one mm-hmm. of the games like Honey Heist that I have tried again outside of our Diacast setting, and it oh. worked amazingly. And it was Yay. entirely different. So it was with another D&D party that where we just wanted to break from D&D, and I wasn't the GM, but I was like, yeah, yeah I'll give it a go, and I don't have to do prep. Ha ha ha. And it was <laughs> insane. It was like turtles and tropical islands and hallucinogenic smoke and those banana ceos so shout out to my uh, crew there it was just <laughs> that sounds nuts. amazing yeah it was entirely yeah. different to this but it was still really fun so yeah i can definitely recommend I... this game for like reuse and i think it would have a lot of reuse in it a lot. i think you could definitely play it again yeah it's also great whenever we want to have like a themed episode and we can't think of a, a game that specifically caters to that we can just be like well you awaken in a get in a in a, in a gay, gay place. place. In a strange. You awaken <laughs> in a gay place. You awaken in a gay Feathers place. Sleepover. Sleep over. <laughs> you oh, awaken in a strange I place. Uh, Peter. But Valentine's what are themed. your final thoughts? Because you haven't spoken in a while. Uh, oh, I I absolutely loved this uh, game system. This session, I would play it again. Yay! I got, I got one more thing I want to say about it. Actually, that's just yeah. to me. If anyone fancies doing fan art, I'd love oh, to see one. Oh, oh my god, I would love it so much. <laughs> yes, 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 I, yes, I, yes, yes. If anyone fancies that, I I kind of want to know what pink looks like because I I, I so threw a lot of colours out there. I, I want, actually no no. What I want to see more is pink next to Alexis. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, yeah. oh, just just a Guardians of the Galaxy style lineup of, of, yeah. of the past, frankly. They are. See, yeah, I just feel that's something I could go. In my with. head, pink is you know in Willy Wonka when Mike TV gets shrunk and then they stretch him out. So oh he's, yeah. He's like yeah. that, oh, but also like really like baby faced and like pink faced <laughs> and mm. bald. <laughs> I, didn't I have can't bald. remember if Pink had hair. Yeah, is he bald? I can't remember. I can't remember. I don't think yeah. I ever described. I, I think I might have described because in my head there was a little bit of the kid from um, the Umbrella Academy. Mm. Five. Yeah, I was getting. Yeah, that no, as I had well. like yeah. brown hair with like a cowlick. That like I don't know why. Yeah, I can that, see that. that. Sort of yeah. Head. But green. Anyway. Was, green was inspired. Your characters were inspired. So good. Havoc Brigade? Let's yes, talk about which Brigade. I game Brigade. mastered, and listening back, you can tell that A, I was completely spitballing, and B, <laughs> that this was very much our, this was the game that we recorded first. Um, we were still trying to, getting into the swing of um, the experience of RPing together and podcasting. Also, um, on RPing online. Are being mm. online, yes, Which is via thing. Discord, um, when we don't have like visual cues for going in and out for um, like uh, ripping off each other. Because that's how I've done most of my RPing. Yeah. Um, even so, the as far as the game, it's uh, as far as the game itself goes, it grew on me. It grew <laughs> on me. Um, I didn't. Mm-hmm. I, I, I wasn't having that much fun to begin with. But once Aww. we got actually into the city. And um, once we got into the city and we got into the rhythm of, well, just causing, you know, whimsical carnage, 
um, as we as we've referenced before, it was great. Um, I think that's definitely the game went on too long. I think once we got it, once we got into the swing of it, we definitely pushed the system to its edges because we took something like three or four recording sessions to do something that was meant to be done in one night, and mm. the fact that there was no, we were very much kind of scrabbling at the edges for refilling, like. Uh, scavenging and having I think, stuff and dice. Yeah, I think the mistake. Like, I mean, without like, I, I really enjoyed it, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I think the mistake that some of us made, those of us who've played the likes of Dungeons and Dragons mm. quite a lot, I think mm. a, f- a couple of us treated it a bit like dun- we were treating yeah. our characters like, oh, we must keep them alive because you know we're going to be yeah, playing this campaign on and yeah. on and on. Yeah, true, I think actually. we didn't really get at first the idea that like, yeah, we can we can be reckless and we can go straight to the castle and we can batter down the doors and we don't really need to think about health potions. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, also we just got uh, really distracted by the idea of the zoo, which I blame myself. But for. Yeah, I regret nothing. Like, I regret I, that, nothing. So that, that was that was entirely yeah. intentional. We were completely on track for the entirety of that section. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and I do also think swinging round. I think like I think you're right, Jacob. It took a little while for us to warm up with it. I think it was mainly because it was the first one we did. Once we got cooking, much like Havoc Brigade, I think we had strong characters that were riffing off like each Havoc other. Brigade. Much like Havoc Brigade, uh, much like would... Honey Heist, <laughs> much like Honey Heist, we had uh, yeah characters. Everyone kind of had a character that was fun and had their own unique gimmick. Mm. and um, we kind of got to know the relationships between the characters and that therefore I think kind of earned the runtime. It was too long, but it was kind of nice to see these characters have a chance to develop a bit because they yeah. were fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely I... could have shortened it though. <laughs> I love the Moontooth um... and... Um, oh, what was your character's name, Matt? I can't remember. I was Wrench of the Wren- Copper Clan. I loved I loved your uh, your love story with Moontooth. Actually, yeah, the accidental romance <laughs> that <laughs> came so from Ubuntu yeah, trying and failing to heal you. <laughs> I think my MVP for it has got like ev- I think everyone brought their A game for character, but my my award for my favorite has to go to the goblins. I think. <laughs> oh my oh, god! Yes, yeah. they were just yeah, stand out. Incredible. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> and that was that was like one of the first games. Helen ever played, and for, for yeah, like literally, you. I think you played D and D once or twice, but apart from that, had you played? I, I had played uh, f- three sessions of D and D before, and then you went straight in playing six characters simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> you just knocked it out of the park. Like you sounded like you've been doing it for years. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, you did. You really did. With the proviso that I overthink everything because I have an anxiety disorder, Yay. and also noting that Havoc Brigade has not yet gone up, I'm actually kind of I'm, I am slightly um, leery of uh, when we publish Havoc Brigade because. I don't think it's my best. I don't think it's my best game, and I feel kind of self-conscious as the self-proclaimed professional dungeon master that a lot of you consistently outshine me. Um, I don't agree with that. I think I think you DM'd it very very well. Yeah, I yeah. think like it was. I loved it. There's a lot of shit you going on. There's a lot of fun japes going on inside characters. I would. I don't think it's yeah. showing you in a bad light at all. I no. think you smashed it. What I would say like, is, I, I think, think we, we all agree didn't... that it is a slow start. But yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. That's on you. I think that's on us as a group. Yeah. May I say? I think we. We didn't play it as though we were doing a podcast because like mm. listeners yeah. it's one of the earliest ones we recorded and i don't think we'd quite got in the vibe yet of right we're going to be listened to because when you play D yeah. for yourself you don't try and hurry through it obviously you're no. meant to enjoy yourselves and like chat among friends and we are here to enjoy ourselves and chat among friends but i think even the style of play like we do cut out any bits where we completely go tangentially like we're actual play but we're not gonna leave in you know Lukey having a coughing fit because that's just bad listening. Um, we literally we left, me, left in me will, having a hiccup yeah, but that was, fit because it that was, was really impossible to take out. That was a great highlight. <laughs> that was, was fabulous. It was hilarious. It that was worth last. it. But like me just treading in the cat water bowl is not something that stays in because it's just no, not relevant tell to like, everyone about the story. The cat water bowl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a very wet right foot right now, but that's that's nice. where that story <laughs> starts and ends. But, yeah, yeah. yeah I think we just weren't quite in like the storytelling mindset, but so much as we're playing a game mindset, which I know sounds like they should be the same just thing. Dry off on the cat? They're not. That's me. No, I'm not cause... drawing off on the cat. I'm trying to make a point here. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost it. Anyway, I said some words. Hey, <laughs> words. Yeah, we were definitely in playing for ourselves, just with some recording yeah. on. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I think it is so, important that we, we do always saying. play for ourselves, but also remember there's an audience. Like, it's it. Yeah. there's no point doing this if we're not having fun, but at the same time, it, it is always important. We were like, oh yeah, there are people who might listen to this. The one thing that was really nice was the sheet like when you get when you get a D sheet it's like being handed a manual and it's yes. like you there are so many words on it and so many things and you look through it and so whenever you're trying to do something it's always you're finding something it's i've noticed yeah. it i've i've I, I dm a couple of friends of mine and whenever and sometimes there's there's can i do this admittedly i'm i'm doing a stupidly large group a lot of the times, there's less like, can I do this? With more experienced D&D players, you get the, can I do this? Can I use this? With Havoc Brigade, you get a problem. And you look at your sheet and you think, how can I solve this? And sometimes the box marked elephant or hippo is the way to solve that problem. <laughs> which is what I really like. That it's is a very toolbox. True, yeah. Sometimes I like all like you that have mechanic. is a box marked elephant. I, I would like more games where I'm given a toolbox and I think I think like Honey Heist I think it very much is sort of sort of a toolbox like that. Mm, I, I think I, I think mean. it should be a toolbox and in some games where there's loads of text on it and you feel like, oh dear, I've just been given a minor novella. <laughs> You're kind of yeah. like, oh. There are a number. Yeah. There are a few games where their character sheets are problems to sort out in themselves, and learning oh, God, to yeah. navigate the Ugh. character sheet is a game Ugh. in itself. <coughs> yeah. Oh my God. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but our yeah, next game, listeners, like, is going to be Vampire you... the Masquerade, and we are not prepared. Which is, we... <laughs> we'll get, we'll get to it. I'm sure we'll be fine. I just I made such a high pitched noise. I don't think it was rules. caught on recording. Like that's no. how concerned I am about that. I, I... <laughs> No, but there are some ah, dogs in your local neighbourhood that would like to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bramble has some words. Uh, I I really enjoy. I, I I hear you. I really enjoyed Havoc Brigade. I think I would. I wouldn't. I suppose one thing I'll. It's it's not really a negative, but it's something to kind of to note is that it seems to me surprising that you kind of got these pre-made character sheets when they could be archetypes. I felt like, though I really yeah. enjoyed playing, like, Wrench, and then you guys each had your own characters, and I think we kind of made them mm. our own. Yeah, yeah that did yeah, feel I, kind I'd of I'd be weird. interested in doing a hack of it where it's like, you're playing orcs, and these are the archetypes, you know, like... Oh, the absolutely, yeah. And the, I'm not a the, huge the fan of pre-made. You, but, but you can actually yeah. kind of develop the character that you want to play yourself. Yeah. Um, I think my overall comment, much like with Honey Heist, and I... I'm, it's interesting that I have the same comment for the two games made by Grant Howitt that we played, is that it felt mm. like a game that you're meant to play exactly once, and we played the fullest extent of that game. Yeah. Yeah. This so much more than much more than um much more than Honey Heist. Uh but this very much felt like, yeah, a game that you whip out of your back pocket exactly once. Welcome to Diacast. We Don't milked rinse. Grant Howitt. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, Grant. Sorry. And we enjoyed your games, Grant. Yeah, no, they were nice. And I want to play. I I do want to bring the characters back to play Orc Ball, which is uh, I'd be interested another in another Grant yeah. Howitt game because I think Profanius would very much love to win the great game of Orc Ball for the glory of Bogal Karuk. <laughs> also, have we lost Helen? No. Helen? Oh, I thought I, we'd lost. Kill Helen. Ah, sorry. I, I agree with Peter with the fact that well, I'm, I'm kind of disagree in some ways with Matt. I quite liked as it was my first game playing, um, especially like my first because I just about got my head around D and D having done that a couple of times, mm. and this was my first game to play that was just entirely different. Um, the fact that I just had a character sheet and then it was like, okay, I have this stuff, let's go. Um, I found quite helpful. Mm. It was just like we have it all, and now we can just head off. But I didn't actually enjoy Havoc Brigade very much. Oh, um, did you know? As the goblins, I like the goblins, <laughs> but I think uh, I discovered I discovered in this game that I'm a lot more like RP heavy, and because of the nature of Havoc Brigade, which is you are a bunch of orcs slash goblins who are just going to fight everything. <laughs> so much of it was based around the fighting mechanic, um, and I just like I'd, I'd rather that we were having like we were at a tea party. I'd rather <laughs> taken six goblins to a tea party. <laughs> It was yeah, very, like yeah, very, yeah. very yeah. RP focused and no. relational focused. I mean, you know, we've got that we've got that joke of yo roll a die, goblet is now officially married. But like that that was those were the moments where you really shone. Yeah, oh, I, think, yeah, I, think, I think that that was I, what I, I liked about the game was the characters. I, yeah, I, I I think that I do enjoy character based games more, um, and I think. A, 
make sure the fact that like it was my first game and then it was so much about like and now we have a battle and now we have a battle and i think on one hand it was good because i had to get super creative with the goblins because they were not made for battling constantly um (laughs) you picked the right character yeah every time you took damage a goblin died (laughs) basically and also i get super attached to my character so the first time one of my goblins died i was genuinely a bit sad i was just like oh Oh. there goes my goblin Stinky Pete? I forget which one died for No, yeah. Stinky Pete lived to the end. Stinky Pete also ended up happily married to a member of the Mechanics Guild. Was it Brain? Oh, was that Stinky Pete? Oh, <laughs> it was Stinky it was, Pete. No, it was, it, was, yeah, it, was, it was the Brain got like squished by the locked no, doors no, or something like that. No, it wasn't the Brain. Like yeah, I wrote his name as Snarl because that was his voice, but that wasn't his actual name. Uh, stab. Yeah. It was Stab. Stab. Stab, who stab. I spoke with a Snarl about. Yes, he he was right. the one who got crushed in a lock. Yeah, Aww. Sure. Nice Guys, I have a Aww. I have a terrible idea. Oh no. god, yes. Yeah. I love it. Or- Go ahead. Orcological theory. <laughs> oh, oh my no. god. Oh yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I <laughs> think. You cut out orc what? We got it on the <laughs> recording, but it was <laughs> yeah. Orcological theory. Oh dear. Oh Yeah. <laughs> That was, that you was know what, that might like healthy person. two of my not-so-top games and combine them into something absolutely amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it just wasn't my sort of game, and because I haven't played very many, it took me playing it to discover it wasn't really my sort of game. But I did enjoy the, the flexibility that came with sort of, you have a bunch of stuff and you have to work out how to be creative with it. And then I did set myself a challenge by having six characters at once, and yeah. I did enjoy yeah. doing stupid voices the whole way through. I know I it wasn't. Yeah. They were a lot of fun. It wasn't that we didn't have enough characters for you to not be a bunch of goblins. Is that you looked at that <laughs> character sheet and went, "I want to be a gaggle of goblins." <laughs> they called to me. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Yeah, fight before Christmas. <laughs> fight before Christmas. Fight before so, Christmas. So I um I enjoyed so I don't GM often because I get very nervous and like Jacob I have anxiety. So when I GM I'm like, is everyone having fun? Is everyone okay? <laughs> Can I get you anything? <laughs> Tea please. <laughs> no. Um I don't think I can get it to London in time. Ugh. So yeah, so I don't do it often. Um but I did enjoy this because it's it's like an easy one to GM. You don't have to do any prep. I did just because I wanted to have some kind of like thematic thing going on and I miss Finland so I wanted to bring Finland into it. And I don't know, I I enjoyed doing it. I didn't find it too difficult to run because it's easy to think on the fly with it and there's not a lot of mechanics. I didn't technically have to roll anything. Um I did just for a couple of things for flavour, but like all that's down to you guys so um mm. yeah what did you guys think please say you liked it i'm so worried yeah <laughs> i really liked fun. it uh, oh, sure. i thought it was great fun like yeah i think like mechanically like simple easy to follow great fun i'd recommend it for anyone who wants to have a bit of fun at christmas time yeah. speaking oh, for myself i lo- i think this was one compared to some of the others it took me a little while to warm up to my character yeah um, <laughs> really like to <laughs> you just went well, like, with tiny was... tim yours was great though Again, you're just out here throwing out these fantastic characters. It was like, I mean, I, it's kind of what I do, but like definitely for me, <laughs> I kind of I was very much up for the idea on paper. When it got into practice, I actually found um, Cratchit harder to play than I expected. Mm. And then you just became. But then I kind of then I mean, Luki, you threw me like a freaking golden bullet with like freaking the gingerbread, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> I see a way to make this more fun. I'm gonna, and then, yeah, and like freaking from there, it was all good. But yeah, I loved it. Like it was easy to play. It was simple. I think. We all kind of like had fun once we warmed up to it. Yes, yeah, solid. True. It was so easy to pick up. Like the mechanism yeah. was just straightforward. Like, are you good? Are you bad? The sheet was really easy to understand, mm. but it wasn't like trying to be so simplistic that you missed aspects of the gameplay. Like, mm. I thought, mm. I thought it worked. It was just yeah. good for a kind of a silly thing. Yeah, I yeah. Think very simple mechanic. Like Possibly the simpler hushed. even than Honey oh, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very much hitting the same vibe. Yeah, very definitely. nice for beginners. Yeah. Very nice mm. for newbies. Yep. What was really going to say much? There was uh, again the uh, it's got a lovely toolkit. It's got a my my thing is going to be character sheets now. Gosh, I'm going to judge every <laughs> single game on its character sheet. 
Analyze the paper. <laughs> Got a lovely tool kit. Um, and <laughs> and you could do fun things with it. Um, I I yeah no I enjoy I enjoyed my character. I enjoyed I enjoyed the setting. Enjoyed how it played. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did enjoy Fair Mindy Braithwaite. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she was a nice one too. It was so creative. You just turn around with a different chocolate and it'd be like, "What's it going to be today?" Oh, it <laughs> was the shivit thing of like having all of these random items that yeah. you're waiting for I the have correct things. opportunity yeah. to use. It's literally a toolbox, as you've said yourself. Yeah, I, I, I think generally in games, I go towards toolbox characters. Like, I, I, I mm-hmm. like having a lot mm. of, I like having a lot of words that I can deal with. That's a personal thing. However, mm. I, I will say I loved. I mean. If you want standout moments, the bit where Rolo just takes <laughs> off one of his hooves. Oh, oh, oh my god! god. Oh my god. Yes. god. <laughs> I mean, this is business. very much. This was very much the Rolo show. This entire. Yes. Oh, yeah, this I was like, like talk of standout characters. This was got to be Rolo's. Rolo <laughs> the Destroyer, trying very hard to get like because like we were saying, with, with my thing, my thing with Havoc Brigade is that. My go-to isn't like I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. And with Rona, I was like, "Fuck it, I'm going to fight." Kill, 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 um, kill, so every kill, single kill, thing kill. was just like, "He's going to murder. He's going to murder. He's going to murder." <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't drawn out battles. Yeah, no, it wasn't. But like any battle mechanic was just quick and fun. It wasn't like hit it, hit it. You know? Well, and yeah, there's, yeah. There's no real battle mechanic because um, yeah. the GM doesn't roll. So you just kind of you either succeed or you don't. And like if you're fighting someone who's like a minion, yeah, you can kill them in one hit. And when you're <laughs> fighting Santa or Mrs. Claus, then um <laughs> you you have to do a few more, but like yeah, they don't mm. defend or anything. So it's very easy to just kill someone. <laughs> Much like you awaken, I liked how and have um Honey Heist actually. It was, I loved how open it was to kind of player input as yeah. well. So like towards the end, Lukey, when we were like, oh, like, I forget who's who originally had the idea about like, oh, you know, maybe like the elves and the gingerbread men and the reindeer need to team up to defeat Mrs. Claus. And then within five minutes, that's like, mm. that's canon yeah. and we're running with it, which was great. Yeah. Like, I did enjoy I must admit, that. I really, I, I quite, I actually really struggled with this game. Um, we did cut one of the recording sessions early and I think part of it is I was just kind of in quite a low place at the time mm. but um, this is where I bring back the point about having strong characters I picked, I absolutely picked up the Reverend as a joke just because I, I knew we'd have these really out there characters because I, um, you know, um, Matt you'd been getting really into your concept um, <laughs> and I just went yeah we'll have this completely like complete straight man and then I really struggled to find things for him to do. Yeah. For the yeah. first mm. couple sessions. Um, Wait, really? That... Because I've been editing it, and he does a lot. I because I defaulted <laughs> to being the bard and the warlord. You did a bit, yeah. That's that's, <laughs> that's 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 my default position. Is that I tell people what to do in games, and I didn't want to play that character, but I I, I wanted to be the meek and mild, you know, uh, cake or death. Anglican pastor, <laughs> um, world vicar, and, uh, and it just if you're meek and mild, you don't do anything. So you have to do yeah, something. again, that was points where because between low mood and also there's the context that I work, uh, yeah, I work retail, I sing in choirs, mm-hmm. and I live in a vicarage, so I am just permanently Christmased out. So <laughs> yeah. the theme, I really I struggled with the theme. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, I really struggled with this because he came across as such a strong character. Um, yeah, I really liked it. And he did like he did so much stuff and I think you a- you actually really got it with him being like this this person who was completely lost but was trying to make the best of the situation and had had found himself in this sort of assassination mission mm. and he was trying to mm. stop these insane people from causing havoc and murder. I mean, you, you ended up turning us all into good. I feel like, yeah. for me at least, like when I went into it, partially I think part of my problem with Cratchit is I went in kind of expecting all of us to be playing like villains and it was going to be like freaking Deadpool is kind of what I expected. Mm. And then that sort of happened with like Rolo, who was <laughs> consistently who brilliant. Who is a, a very nice, kind, loving, gentle reindeer who was yeah. never But I feel like, the, like the rest of you guys, which I really enjoyed, like you were kind of, you had, you had legitimate reasons for being there. Yeah. And so like, and the more we went, and particularly the influence of the vicar, like being like nice to people and trying to oh are you sure about this and then like as it developed I was like actually 
I, I feel I feel like maybe Santa like maybe we're justified in this and maybe we do need to find the Christmas spirit. Like well, actually that... maybe we're not the villains. <laughs> that wasn't even like my plan in the beginning. Like I knew there was gonna be some kind of twist, but I didn't know what it was gonna be. And then mm. we just kind of kept building this this capitalist hellscape. Because <laughs> Yeah, we did. Yeah. Because I think a lot of it hinged on Jingle Burt being like this escaped slave. Um, and it's that like, kind of yeah, got, there was definitely okay. a watershed moment where we were like, right, okay, this is actually with the good yeah. guys. Yeah, I think yeah. like we, we kind of got started with like the sort of you know mostly joke about H's character working for a uh, specific shipping company. and packaging company, um, yeah, the completely unrelated to any in real life, um, mm-hmm. and how <laughs> like it's just been so capitalized and commercialized, and like people are overworked and miserable, and that's why it has to stop. And then that turned into, and then the elves are dying of guilt if they don't work hard enough. And then it turned into literally <laughs> yeah, the slave di- labour gingerbread. Yeah, the elves dying of shame was a bit of a... That was just me panicking. I didn't well, I didn't really know how else to go out about killing Santa, or like <laughs> punching Santa, without criticising capitalism. Because otherwise well, you're like, exactly. well, are we criticising like the pagan-y Santa figure? Or are we criticising yeah. like the Christian tradition? Neither of those seem like a sensible thing no, to do, I say, as a capitalism. pagan and someone brought up vaguely Christian. Um, <laughs> 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 but yeah, yeah. So I was like, how else do I go about this? Like, I, I immediately thought of an Amazon worker, and I was like, well, I just not, perfect, everyone's going to do that, right? Everyone is going to do that, and then no one else I did. I thought it but... was a great call. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because um, like... I was knocking around a few ideas. One of them was that Santa was going to be a robot, and Mrs. Claus was going to be like, um, his... the controller. <laughs> yeah, the controller, or that there were going to be like constant clones of Santa. Who had to keep regenerating? You dropped a line about that. I noticed it. There was Did one. I? Yeah, I there forget. Was... It was something like it was like, oh, he's the only Santa, and you were like, is he? <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. And there like was that. a line when I was confront when um the vicar was confronting Santa about him being like, oh, this version of me is is used up or something. And mm. oh, oh, behind the scenes thing. A pl- okay, two points. Two points. My one major criticism <laughs> of how we handled this game is I feel like um your character H was underutilized. Mm. I don't think like we got yes. I don't feel like we got as much yeah. out of yeah. Katarina yeah. as we yeah, did everyone else. I didn't have like the funniest gags because she was very like straight talking, I'm not making jokes in per- like and I felt like I just kinda of paled in comparison next to some of your more like eccentric <laughs> characters. Mm. I was kind of I was waiting for a chase sequence that we just never really had time know, to do. Given you was the driver, I was like expecting to turn a corner and yeah, find exactly. a fucking eighteen wheeler. Because I was the driver, I was like, yeah, I was on. so ready. And it's never, just just never really found the time. I never got a sodding forklift. I gave you a little sleigh, <laughs> the shitty little sleigh <laughs> that ran on Christmas spirit. Yeah, but it like, immediately crashed. Broke. Yeah, we immediately yeah. sent into a war. You immediately yeah. destroyed it. <laughs> I, know, my, I feel like there's a deleted scene. My second point is the text, is the WhatsApp text that I sent to um, Helen and Lukey. Um, oh yeah, I I didn't manage to incorporate that. I was trying to think of a way, but um, it Jacob suggested that Rolo was was a what was it? it was a clone? And he Rolo is a clone. His brothers. Yeah. yeah, Rolo is a clone, and he destroyed his brothers. Hence, he is the last Rolo. Yes, um, and that's so I did... why you have like you have Rudolph and you have Donna and you have Blitzen, and it's mm. the same reason they live on for so long is because they're just cloned. Being cloned. They're cloned yeah. that yeah. constantly. Was... Wow. That makes sense. That was, was like something I was thinking of doing, but um, with cloning. But then I think I I had to make a choice between there's a bunch of Santa clones and Mrs. Claus is an evil Krampus witch. Um, <laughs> And I think it was actually Reverend Archibald who kind of tipped me into the mystical because I wanted him to have like his spiritual moment. Um, I, I, he was pivotal. I have well, a, you know. I, uh, my point would be the thing with this game is that it's meant to be sort of high velocity and mad. Yes. And Reverend yeah, Archibald kind of slow slows it down. it down because it is based on a Tom Scar um, YouTube video. Yes. And his, and his humour, he's all about these like really fast action scenes even his humor is is extremely high velocity i like it's, trains yeah it's stuff <laughs> like but it's stuff like that because it's instant punchline it's sort of the vine era of humor yeah. where you go set up punchline set it's up punchline set up punchline it is yeah. Yeah. Way yeah. Oh, yeah. God, it was early youtube 
Yeah, no, it's pre-Vine. Yeah, I know it's pre-Vine. But then you have Vine, which sort of created this sort of like, it's six seconds, you have six seconds to do setup, punchline, setup, punchline. And that's why they're so infinitely quotable, because you, you, mm. you don't need they're that much content. But quote. Yeah. And yeah. with Reverend Archibald, it really? slows it. It slows down the velocity of what's meant to be happening. And it's meant to be high-paced and mad and insane. And so... I would say to anybody that looking to get the most out of this game is be insane, be, be the wackiest and insanest and the fastest characters. Don't necessarily like chug thirty Red Bulls and take a solution of um, bullet ant venom, which um, <laughs> do, do not try at home. Um, <laughs> Damn it! I already did, Peter. <laughs> Just, uh, that's that's. So but I do also, but I do also think we got an, an unusual and interesting emotional conclusion. Yeah, okay. Okay. By, <laughs> having, by having Archibald, we were able to bring it. It wasn't just the like slapstick you know we kill this person then we kill this person then we kill this person which if we'd had you know five rolos like yeah. it just wouldn't yeah. be and we kind of already done that with habit yeah. Brigade. that's yeah. true that was yeah. a bit of a risk i must say i kind of feared that going into it so by having the contrast because because also again because we're a podcast i wanted us to have like a, a satisfying ending which I think Archibald mm. kind of helped create. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so the last half an hour epilogue off of, um, is lovely. Bouncing off of uh, Peter's comments, cycling back a bit to how he said, "Oh, it's a very high." You said it's a very high velocity game. I think the joke of Archibald is that he's in the wrong game. Mm. He would have been yes, amazing yes. in feathers. He would have um, yeah, exactly, he? exactly. So yeah. Um, but that that was part of the joke, and it took me a while to work out what to do with it. But yeah, absolutely. The that third bite. Yeah, it took. It, we were on the third recording session, but by that point, and once we got the whole, you know, d- d- liberate cap- Christmas from capitalism angle, very much, I was much more at home with the character by then. Mm. Um, I will say, I will say, just from a storytelling telling perspective, that ending. Um, we had the Lord. We had the Return of the King problem. We just wouldn't stop fucking cutting away. I know. Mm. <laughs> there were about six endings in there. I know. It's going to be hell to edit. My, so, so final thoughts. I really, really enjoyed this game, and I think for yeah. me, it was yeah, it was very. Again, I I keep trying to do something different in every game, and I'm starting to run out of of differentness. Um, <laughs> But for me, it was like just just playing Carnage was something that I'd actually tried to avoid a little bit while we mm-hmm. were playing Havoc Brigade. So for me, it was something new and different and really, really enjoying. So I absolutely loved it. I had a great time. Yeah, absolutely. Once I once I got into it and once I got over my residual, you know, humbug, um, my innate yeah. levels of humbug, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, that's actually the same. I went in a little bit negatively in a way. Like, not necessarily. Like, I knew Luke would do a good job, but I'm not a huge fan of Christmas either. So I was like... Thank you for having <laughs> faith in me. I have none in myself. Oh, no, no. I, I knew it would be GMing fine. It, but, like, Christmas-themed stuff is always the same. And actually, this yeah, wasn't too bad. This so. was not! <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. It was about finding the Christmas spirit, which is common, but in the worst way possible. <laughs> Although, ironically, we did end up finding the Christmas spirit so and would have we, a lovely time. Would we yeah. recommend it? Oh, yeah. yeah. I would recommend yeah. it, yeah. Okay. Very much in the same vein. As a one-off as, again. Yeah. yeah. As, again, as, I think as, it's, very much it's, in the same vein as Honey Heist. Yep. Um, it's a yep. really good thing for beginners as well, for like, if you yes. just want to, you know, try something new and try something different, try something a bit fun. I think it's mm-hmm. it's a really simple gameplay um, like mechanic, you can I play would, it with any uh, dice you have, and then it's just a bit, just a bit silly. Yeah. Totally. I'd also add to that, like if you if you like the sound of this game, but you don't want to do it Christmas themed, it's basically a port of. Is it Lasers and Feelings? It's Lasers and Feelings. Of? So the original... yeah, which I've played as well, which is same, same, yeah. basically same idea, but a loose sci-fi version, yeah. and that's also great. Very, very similar. Again, and you can like, probably fuck around with it to be anything. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, it's very same good. sort of light tone. Uh, I played yeah. freaking a thumb-sized mole like in the Aww. in the last session, which was fun. In his own, basically, he was just a scouse. Like he just had like this robot that he controlled, and he was just like the morale officer on the ship. It was Aww. great fun. We'll have to do later <laughs> feelings sometime. Trying to make everybody happy, um, but yeah, so yeah, it's basically if you fancy this without Christmas, check yes. out Lizards and Feelings. Sound, sound sensible. Yeah. So that was a different thing we were trying. Let us know if you enjoyed hearing us talk about the games we've done so far. And if it's something you'd like us to keep doing with new games, we'd love some feedback from our lovely listeners. And not to worry, next week we're coming back with a new game series. We will be playing Feathers, a belonging beyond belonging game about fallen angels and the transgender experience. But until then...
Thank you for listening to Diacast. If you'd like to keep up to date with episodes and announcements, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Diacast, and on Instagram at DiacastPod, and subscribe to us on your favourite podcatcher. And hey, if you enjoyed listening to us, maybe consider giving us a rating or review, or sharing us with a friend. We really love that. Diacast is Lukey Slynn, Matt George Lovett, Jacob War, Helen, Peter Wellman, and H. Folkmans. Our logo and banner art are by H. Folkmans. The Diacast theme and all episode variations featured in this episode were composed and performed by Matt George Lovett. This episode was edited by Peter Wellman. Links to all of the games mentioned and reviewed can be found on our website, diacast.com, along with a submission form if you know of a game that you think we should play. And at least for this week, that's how the Diacast.